We finally got confirmation and new details on the struggle that has been raging within Blizzard and Overwatch played an important role. Let's have a look. This is a topic that I have been talking about a lot on this channel and over on my personal channel. The evolution of Blizzard as one of the most popular game studios in the West, the good guys to this new era in which Blizzard is considered to be a greedy bunch of villains that are only out for our hard-earned money. It is a story that saddens me. I have been playing Blizzard games for decades, yet I too at some point had to accept that the Blizzard I used to know is gone. I made a whole video about that. Contrary to some people though, I still strongly believe in the people behind the games, the people that actually make them, the developers, the artists, the designers. I still believe that those people want to make genre defining games. So why don't they? Well, I have my theories, as I've discussed in those videos. Now, I did not pull all of those theories out of thin air. And trust me, there was a better way of saying that, but I didn't want to shock anybody. They were based rather on things I have read in other places, things I've heard. My general knowledge of Blizzard and the people that work there. And my own experience as someone that used to work in the industry. However, apart from the occasional article that would hint at whatever was happening behind the scenes or one of the former employees kind of lashing out on Twitter, we never really had any uh, proof. Well, I think that is about to change. Jason Schreier, a gaming journalist that writes for Bloomberg is releasing a new book somewhere in the next few weeks that is called Play Nice, The Rise, The Fall and The Future of Blizzard. As you might imagine, I ordered it as soon as it was possible. I need to have this book. Jason is a journalist that has been following Blizzard for decades and he was always one of the first to kind of out these problems that were happening at the company. And over the years, he got to know a lot of the employees, the current and the former employees. And for this book, he interviewed a lot of them and some anonymously just to make sure that they stay safe. And according to some people that got their hands on the book early, it definitely is interesting. Today he released an adjusted snippet of the book on uh, Bloomberg. And that little snippet already confirms what a lot of us had been saying. Bobby Kotick killed Blizzard. However, it gets even worse. As many of you probably know, Overwatch actually grew from the ashes of a castle project called Titan. Titan was going to be Blizzard's next World of Warcraft because World of Warcraft had a huge drop in subscriber numbers. They went from 12 to 6 million in a really short time. I've talked about the reasons for that in previous videos. And Bobby Kotek, who was the CEO of Activision Blizzard, wanted something new. See, at that point, Bobby's influence started to grow within the company. But Project Titan was going to be that new thing. It was their attempt to blend a first-person shooter, but according to the article, the calming vibes of The Sims. I have to be honest, that is the first time I hear it described like that. But And while Bobby was trying to get a grip, he had been very pushy, but still hands off. Mike Moham, the CEO of Blizzard, who actually founded the company, made sure of that. Mike's career as CEO of Blizzard suddenly took a twist when his biggest job, his biggest challenge became keeping Bobby and his goons at bay, which was a battle he was destined to lose, especially in this society. Money always wins. Now the moment it all took a really hard turn was when Project Titan got cancelled. And that was after many years of working on that game and spending 80 million dollars. Previously we had always heard that it was 200 million but I guess those numbers were exaggerated a tiny bit. Still 80 million dollars? Yeah, that's a lot. At that point Bobby was not only upset because the World of Warcraft numbers were dropping but that one project that he was bragging about that was going to be the next big thing got canned. But the thing was, Blizzard was still profitable. I mean, while the numbers might have dropped, World of Warcraft still brought in a lot of money and then shortly after that, Overwatch was released, which was a very unexpected success that brought in a lot of cash. Still, Bobby saw the opportunity to take over. And while Mike Morham tried his best to stop them, the Activision moguls forced Blizzard to get a new CFO, Chief Financial Officer, and they hired someone that came from Procter and gamble. Those are the people that sell you diapers, soap, detergent, all that kind of stuff. He had zero interest in games and especially gamers. His job was to squeeze us for every single dollar. For decades, Mike Morheim and his team had succeeded in building an empire on the principle of putting people first. But that era was over. Armin Zerza, that new CFO, started out by questioning everything, like BlizzCon. He wanted to scrap it. It looks like he got his way. Why are we still supporting Heroes of the Storm? Why are we not forcing Hearthstone players to buy more packs? And one that is going to hit close to home for all of us. Why is Overwatch not selling their heroes and their maps? 
Yeah, suddenly Blizzard was a profit first company. And in my opinion, there's no surer way to ruin a company and to make less money in the game industry than being a profit first game studio. But anyways, over the years, the company changed. More of these corporate goons took key positions within the company. And the senior staff, all those great minds that made those games that we love to play, left. People like Chris Madsen, who eventually returned, and yeah, Jeff Kaplan. After resigning for a first time in 2017, but then getting talked out of it, in October 2018, it had been enough for Mike Morheim. He left the company that he started himself. He was tired. He was done fighting Bobby. And you know what the worst thing is? According to the book, not only Mike, but also some of Bobby's own goons saved us from a lot worse. Because Kotick had some plans that were really out there. He was also responsible for the failure of the Overwatch League, for instance. In that little snippet, we can read that Nate Nanzer, who became the first commissioner for the Overwatch League and was one of the brains behind the whole thing, proposed a 250,000 buy-in fee for team owners. Bobby corrected him and said it needed to be 20 million at least, because he was going to convince some of his friends to step up and uh, yeah, that is the moment that the Overwatch League died. You can't really start an organization like that with the expectations being so high. It's kind of sad. And it's only just the tip of the iceberg. Worst part is, it's not even over. It's still going on. To be fair, I don't even know if it's ever going to be over. That profit first disease has really spread to some key positions within the company. And Microsoft has not chosen to eradicate that, which has its own reasons. Let's just say if you start spending 70 billion in acquisition, people above you start to take notice. So yeah, that profit first ideology is still there. It's not with the people that make the games, again, but we have all personally noticed that it still exists. There is some pushback, however. A little ray of light, a little dot of light in the distance. Like that new uh, mythic weapon skin for Anna, the bundle that they released on the shop. With the previous bundle for the Reinhardt mythic weapon, you only got the base weapon for the 40 bucks. This time around, you got the base level and all the levels unlocked for that same price. On top of that, in the last few months, they have really tried to add more value to that mythic weapon with the changes they did to the UI and to the weapons themselves. Is it a win? Hell no. It's still 40 bucks. That is still a lot of money. But it is a sign that there's pushback from those people that want to put players first, that are on our side and want us to get a fair treatment. That mentality still lives within the company. Microsoft, Activision, Blizzard themselves, and even the whole industry need to take lessons from those early years at Blizzard, where they held true to the values of putting people first. And those people are the players and the developers. And if you do that, profit will follow. Look, Blizzard back in the day wasn't perfect. There were issues. There were some big issues. But it sure beats the image that we have of that company right now. Anyways, as soon as that book arrives, I'll be reading it. And if I find anything interesting in there, I'll be talking to you guys. So make sure to subscribe. However, for now, that was it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. It always helps me out. I also want to thank my patrons. I could not make these videos without you guys. You have my eternal gratitude. If you have a few minutes left, maybe check out this video. Click it. But above all, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Bye-bye.